check one, two. <coughs> Get my throat cleared here before I start singing, y'all. Hear that okay? <laughs> Test one, two. <coughs> I'm getting ready. I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> All right. We got a sweet couple here going to be singing for us. All right. Y'all have to bear with us from singing a cappella. Yeah. No, that's fine. Which one are you going to do? Ready? I told the preacher tonight he needs to come and sing. <laughs> yeah, he caught James unaware yesterday and made him testify last night. Y'all saw that? So he ought to make a preacher come sing with us, have a trio. <laughs> and, uh, what a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. Comes back a few years to us. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. If you need to sing with us. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms who take and shield thee, thou will find a solace there. Now we're going to sing, He Touched Me. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame In the hand of Jesus touch me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Oh, he touched me, and know oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shatter while eternity rose. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and all the joys that flood 
with my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me Okay, on our prayer request, we got myself, Tommy Boykin, George Williams, Wes White, and Alice Boykin. Do we have any more? Yes, ma'am. Tracy White. Yes, ma'am. Savannah Nelson. Yes, ma'am. Gifford Fairclough. Put Hoss Thomas on there. He's got a bulging disc in his back. Yes, ma'am. Al Wedgwood. Miss mm. Linda. Iris Dennis. Yes, ma'am. Bobby Bisco. Are you getting all this? 
You're doing a lot better job than Tracy did last night. I know I tried to read it. Anybody else? Any praises? Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Well, the good Lord took care of it. He knows that. Anybody else? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Please. Dear Lord, we just want to come to you this evening, Lord, just lift up each one of these names, each of the praises, Lord. You know each need, you know each care, Lord God. We just ask you to take and heal. Be with the doctors for one that's going to have surgery. Guide their hands and put your angels to them and bless them, watch over them. And just be with all the other names, Lord, that's been lifted up, Lord. You just take them and heal them and bless them. Comfort be with each and every one, Lord God. And Lord, we just pray for Chip tonight. Just give him the words that help for us to hear, Lord. And just ask you to go in with us for the rest of this week, Lord, and forgive us of every sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tracy. You're the one-armed bandit again, eh? That's good. He can handle it. Yes, sir. It'd be great. Thank God he hears and answers prayer. Amen. How many of you blessed tonight? That's pretty good. I was going to pick on y'all, but everybody raised their hand. <laughs> we're, hey, we're. I got an old buddy. I'd say anybody got a praise report and he'd say I'm five foot five and on the green side of the grass. <laughs> so that's 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 a good testimony. Oh, old Wade, he was a good little bull rider. He he's still my buddy. I saw his dad yesterday at Chick fil A or day before yesterday. <laughs> you know, it's been hot and <laughs> yesterday evening was that yesterday we went to see my sister? Or maybe Monday. Maybe Monday. So I got a, I got a little neat story here with you. Y'all know my sister is 82, and she has pretty uh, pretty advanced dementia, so she don't really know who you are necessarily. She might know. Uh, so we went to see her, and but now f as far as the girls, you know, I see I, I I did quite a few horses Monday morning. Did some yesterday morning for a little while. And it's hot, so I try to get them done early and get on to other stuff and get on the phone with Miss Rachel and always something going on here at the church we're trying to plan for. And we appreciate the pizza tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. A, a, a full tummy is, is a good thing. There's uh, six pizzas, maybe seven left in there, so we did pretty good. I knew we wanted a few extras, so we want you to take those with you. Uh, Anybody that wants to take one, uh, there's seven of them. Make sure they're, they're all gone before we leave. We don't want nothing wasted. But anyway, <coughs> it was hot the other day on Monday, and, and man, I, I got in and cooled off a minute, you know, and did, did some stuff on the phone and uh, told Allison and Bailey, I said, dang, man, it's, it's been hot today. And I said, what do y'all think <coughs> if, if we went up to Chick-fil-A and got, got us something to eat? And then I get my sister a, a milkshake. She loves a malt or a milkshake. She can she can drink as many as you can buy. She can do it. <laughs> so we we go to Chick Fil A and and you know so the so so the girls they said well you know Dad and and Allison said you know hubby we're gonna, since you you know we're going to do it for you we want to be there with you so they went we went to Chick Fil A we got us a good meal <laughs> and then we got us a milkshake Sammy. No, I didn't. <laughs> you hear what Sammy said? You didn't carry your girlfriend up, and y'all remember y'all remember that picture at the nursing home? <clears throat> How many of you have not been here on a Wednesday and seen the picture in the nursing home? My sister lives in a little wing there where you know people got a little dementia, and uh, my wife thought this was hilarious. I'm sitting in a chair. Bailey's in a chair, my wife is in a chair, and my sister's in a chair. And so we're talking the other day, and this little lady, Miss Green, <laughs> notice the red face there. This little lady, Miss Green, she comes up to me, and 
taps me on the leg, and I thought she wanted the chair, so I was going to, you know, get up. She grabbed me on the shoulder and made me sit down and then sat down with me. <laughs> and the chair wasn't with that wide, so <clears throat> it, it made me real nervous, but they got real tickled about it. So, Sammy, <clears throat> between you and Marvin picking on me about cats and you bringing up the... the <laughs> I can't win for losing. <clears throat> I try not to cover all that. So she did start rubbing my leg, and it was fixing to get real. I was fixing to get up and move on out. <clears throat> but it all, it, all, it all worked out. So anyway, they like picking on me. But uh, it wasn't it sweet of, uh, I just sat there and patted her, and uh, we was, <laughs> it was fine. But wasn't it sweet of Bailey and Allison to go eat Chick-fil-A with me, you know? you know? I mean, they, they felt like they did it for me. It was God calling on their life, you know, to eat some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah, they suffered for the Lord, you know, and, and to help one of his servants out, you know. They, they went to Chick-fil-A, and uh, <clears throat> Bailey come out with a cookie, looked like a hubcap on a 57 Chevrolet. <laughs> I don't know, what did you get, Allison? She got a brownie, looked like a, a whole cake, you know. I don't know. It was a pretty good sized brownie. But anyway, we we went to, to see my sister. And on a serious note, I want to encourage you. Uh, you always, on in our morning devotions, I talk. Anytime I open my mouth, it's about sharing Christ with other people. And when you are born again, we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight we talked about sunday about who we are and our identity in christ but something happens on the inside of you second corinthians five seventeen. we just quoted it sunday uh if any man is in christ he's a new creation old things have passed away and all things have become what new and so i take notice of my sister she doesn't know who we are but i always say this is your little brother chet and Allison, and she'll she'll smile. I don't know, you know, for a minute she may know who we are. But bless her heart. Uh, w when you're born again, let me explain this to you. It's not just in your mind. You're a spirit. And your spirit is born again and made anew. You're a new creature in Christ. And we, we have a, 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 a mind and, 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 and a soul, which is our will and our emotions. And, and we live in a body, but... Our spirit being will live forever, our, the real us. We'll lay this old tent down one day, right? How many of us, our tents don't look like they did 20 years ago? <laughs> our tents are a little windblown sometimes. <clears throat> we might lie this, lay this old tent to rest, but our spirit will be more alive than ever before. We're going to live eternity somewhere, and that's up to us. And number one, we, we pray that it's in heaven because we, we know that it's in heaven if we receive Christ, our Lord and Savior. But our job is to share the love of Christ with as many people as we can. Because when you're born again, something happens on the inside. I mean, I know when I got saved, uh, the, the sky was bluer and the grass was greener. I knew something marvelous had happened on the inside. I was a baby Christian, but I, no way could I explain that. But I've, you know, through the years, and there's still no English words in the vocabulary to completely explain what happens to you when you accept Christ. And it doesn't mean life's going to be easy, but a, a spiritual transformation takes place. And so there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I get a good amen? And what I'm going to share with you really stirred my faith this week because I've seen my sister lose all of her memory pretty much. She doesn't know much. Every now and then she does remember that she used to raise goats. And we show her pictures of goats, and man, it makes her happy. She smiles. But when we got there yesterday, it's funny how the things that she has forgotten, but something that she has not forgotten is her relationship with her Savior. Man, that blesses my heart to think about of all the things that she's forgotten. She loves her Jesus, and it's just like if you mention her knowing Jesus, it's just like my sister 20 years ago. So yesterday we get there. My sister was real upset. I couldn't really tell it. I saw the back of her head. She was sitting in a little chair. And this little nurse, it was sweet, she she had a, a wet rag, and she was rubbing her neck, and she was saying, you know, it's going to be okay. And I thought, dang, I wonder what happened. 
did she get in a fight or what? You know, <laughs> I was just not really, but I thought, dang, I wonder what's going on. And, and uh, the little nurse was so sweet. She was just patting on her and rubbing her cold rag on her neck and her head. And my sister was just weeping. So I kind of eased up there and didn't want to, I wanted to let the little lady do her thing. And she said, no, there, nobody was hurt. So in my sister's mind, she had walked outside in this little care area, and there's a fenced area where they can't get out. So they'll, you know, you, they just walk off. So somewhere in her being outside, in her mind, she, saw a, she thought she saw a car wreck, and two little young kids were very badly hurt, and she didn't know if they were going to make it. So in her mind, it was very real. Now, that did not happen, obviously, uh, she didn't even really know who I was. I said, I come up there, and she was crying. And so then she kind of, I think, recognized me. She actually says, you look like daddy. <laughs> so probably some, you know, she, she, it's a little bit of remembrance there many years ago, better than, you know, right before your eyes. So she said, yeah, you look like your daddy, boy. <laughs> she says that sometimes. And so I said, you know, it's Chet and Allison, and this is Bailey. And, and she said, well, them kids got hurt. I said, no, 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 Christine, they didn't get hurt. Everybody's okay. She don't know really who I am. She don't know nothing. And she, but she's sad. She's crying. She said, man, those kids. And so I said, they're okay. And Allison said, oh, yeah, they're, they're fine. And you know what she said? She was crying, but she said, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And so it just blesses me that her memory struggles, but when it comes to Christ... She's sharp as a tack. And you can just be talking, and you know, she may not know much what you're talking about, but I mean, she'll say praise the Lord, or like with her, you know, it was real to her, but it didn't really happen. And when we tried to calm her down there, she listened, but first thing out of her mouth was, thank you, Jesus. And then she started crying and just said, <laughs> raised her hand and said, praise God. So my point is, when, when, when Jesus is your Lord, it's way much deeper than just our mind, amen. It, it goes into our spirit, our real, the real man. And so that relationship with Christ is the greatest decision we've ever made in our life. And I've learned a lot of things from, from loving on my sister during this time that her mind has, has slipped. Yes, her mind has slipped, but her spirit is born again. And I've been able to watch that relationship with Christ how powerful it is and so that just man that built my faith and every time i go see her because you can talk about something she meant i was talking about was you you mentioned jesus she perks up her ears go up she's like hey boy he's good ain't he so <clears throat> never underestimate the power of an opportunity to plant the word of god as a seed in someone's heart but i appreciate the girls there taking one for the team going to chick-fil-a and getting the hubcap uh, cookie and a half a sheet of uh, brownie. I'm just joking. Hey, we'll run over some quick announcements. Welcome to Jasper County Cowboy Church. We don't pass the hat here, huh? I just got atmosphere after I ate my chicken. That's it. <laughs> atmosphere and water. It'll keep you thin. <clears throat> I had a customer one time. <laughs> had a horse that was acting like a fool. Clayton, you'll know this guy. He was your principal and whooped your butt during high school. One time, this horse was acting up, and then and Mr. Rodney's wife and daughter was having trouble with it, and it wouldn't stand still. Now, Rodney was tough as long as the women walked away. So we're at the barn, and this horse is acting crazy, so they had to feed it some feed, you know, just jumping around. And Rodney waited until his wife and daughter went up to the house, and he said, I can tell you what that horse needs. I said, what is it? Why are you whispering? He said, I don't want him to hear me. I said, well, tell me what it is. He said, he needs atmosphere and water for a week, and he'll stand right. <laughs> and I never forgot that. <laughs> yeah, nah, no, but it, it was a pretty unruly horse, but I really didn't need any. I just ate atmosphere and some water, so I didn't need any dessert that time. But I do, right? <clears throat> Don't I? <clears throat> yeah, I will eat oatmeal raisin cookie at Subway. Or three, you know, if they put three in the sack, I don't want to hurt their feelings, so I eat three cookies to make them happy. Praise God. All right, we're going to run down our announcements. Men's prayer breakfast every Monday. Uh, display for the nursery, if you have a little one in the nursery. Celebrate recovery classes going really good. 
appreciate everybody that's coming to those De live devotions every morning at 6.40 and our Tuesday testimony. Mr. James got roped into it. He brought a horse over to the house last night and said, I'll shoe the horse if you do the testimony. And we just looked at each other. Now, see, it's up to you. If you want your horse done, you got to do the testimony. So <laughs> anyway, it was a standoff. And then there you go. He got his horse done and I got my testimony done. So uh, <laughs> sale barn, don't forget to stop by the sale barn. The buckles are in the office as well. Cowboy camp, I'm going to get Miss uh, Debbie. She's probably got some announcements she wants to make about the cowboy camp. That's our next big outreach. We'll, don't forget monthly planning is this coming Sunday. The only couple of things that I know of that we have uh, real soon is basically the cowboy cowboy camp. We'll get this handheld mic ready to go. Look at there. Hey, y'all y'all give up Moses a hand clap back there running, Sam. 16, are you 16? Man, the younger you are, the easier it is to do the technology stuff. Amen. <laughs> All right, Miss Debbie, tell us what we got going. Well, we only have two weeks to go before we get into vacation Bible school, and we still need an awful lot of help. Um, we need people to be praying and open their hearts and see where he leads y'all to be in vacation Bible school. We still need a lot of teachers. We have no idea how many teachers we're going to have. I don't see a lot of churches around town doing vacation Bible school this year, so we may have 500. I don't know. We may have 20. But whatever God brings us, I would hope that we would be ready to teach them what he wants them to learn from him. So what we're asking is if, if people would just, I know we're busy. People work. I know we've had the Handy Capable Rodeo. We've had our rodeo here, and now we do this, and it's just been bam, bam, bam. And I know everybody's tired. You know, we all are, and it's hot. And people got a lot of stuff going on. But if we really search our heart and see what God has, and these, these kids, this is an ideal time to get these kids and get that seed planted. It might not grow for years, but if we put it in there like God wants us to, then these are going to be the future of maybe not our church, but a church somewhere. So we just need y'all to think about it, and please, we need to try to get our teachers signed up as quick as we can. We still need second grade, third grade, fourth grade, first grade, and a kindergarten and a nursery worker. That's how many teachers we still need for vacation Bible school, and it's only a week and a half away. So if you feel led, if it's not a big deal, I mean, um, well, I don't mean it's not a big deal, but it, it's not that hard. You only have to teach two lessons. And the other time you'll be outside, Charlotte and I are going to do the heat. We're going to be outside <laughs> in the heat teaching out there along with Bailey and Allison are going to be watering for us, you know. So um, all you have to do the rest of the time is follow your class around. We're going to have one of the security people in there with you. Um, I know we got a bunch of bad kids here, so we're going to put some security. <laughs> okay. Is that happening? Yes, ma'am. It starts at, we go registration from 5 to 6. We do opening from 6 to 6.30, and then we kick off all our other stuff from 6.30 to 8.30. And it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday is our family night. So it's only for five nights, four nights of teaching. And right out there at that table, right after this is over with, you'll see one of us out there. Yeah, and the four-year on the left, right there where they did the directories, that's where it'll be. And so we're asking. Today it's at night, so that'll help some people that work. We still need people for, we, we're getting a few people for registration. We need people to help with smoke homes, you know. We need somebody to do our inside recreation games here. Um, there'll be four nights of that. They'll be right in here. And what we do is some ranch rodeo games that are real easy to do with the teens. Um, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I think if y'all would, if you just open your heart and listen to God and follow him, that you would really enjoy it. I know years and years and years of doing Bible school, it's probably one of the best times. And I learn something every year. I mean, when I open that Bible and study, I learn something new every year. So think about it. Um, we, really, we really need your help. I mean, we can't do vacation Bible school with just a few people. I mean, we can. We can put them all together, and we can, can do it in that direction. And, you know, you hate to say you, you want to go begging for help for Bible school because I feel like God's got enough of us here to lead us to do vacation Bible school. So think about it. Open your heart. See what you can do. If it's nothing else, if you can come sweep a floor or just be here and say, look, I'm willing to help. Put me somewhere. Um, 
Luke and I were trying to fight for it. So, um, you got it? I'm pretty good at that. I can fall. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just my heart feels good, but I know it is y'all's too. So, um, think about it if you feel led to, please, just after church, see us out there. If you know of anybody, your friends, say, call and say, hey, I'm going to do Bible school and you're going to come help me. That's how you just pull them right on in there with you. So, um, it's a blessing. We've got everything for you. You don't have to do anything. It's all ready to go. So, um, see what God, what God's got for you with that patient in Bible school. So. Debbie. Appreciate their dedication to we're always doing something around here that we, we we don't get lazy at JC3. We got from one event to the other, and God always provides, and we're planting lots of seed. Amen. You ever seen an old farmer when they go in in the evenings, what they look like? They're tired. Amen. How many of you remember old-timey farmers before they had all this equipment? They was tired, and we're farmers. We're seed planters. We're, we're, we're planting a little different seed. We're planting the seed of the gospel. Amen. That touches us forever. No matter if you got uh, something going on like my sister with dementia, the, the power of the gospel is p more powerful than that. She can't remember anything. But when it comes time, she can remember some things. But when she can't remember anything, she knows her relationship with Christ. Can I get a good amen? All right. God is, God is, God is good. Amen. If you have your Bible, let's open it up to Numbers chapter 14. Got a new baby over here on the side, on the front row. All right, good deal. Hey, I'm in Ashley. That's good. Brand new baby. Six held. Two weeks. Two weeks. Itty bitty. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I heard something. Six. It was six pounds. Two weeks. Numbers chapter fourteen. We'll find our spot. Miss Cheryl's quick up there. Numbers 14. <clears throat> We're going to look at verse 24 in just a moment. It'll be on the screen. But I want to refresh your memory. Remember we were speaking not too long ago on Wednesday nights about the power of our words. Words are very powerful. Uh, they can be good, used for good or for bad. I said that, you know, I, you could punch me on the arm and give me a bruise. Like uh, my, actually my shin has a bruise where a horse pawed me in my shin the other day. But it'll be gone in a few days. Uh, but words are much worse than a punch. Uh, words can hurt us for a long time, and so we want to make sure that we use our tongue. It's a great gift that God gave us. Without it, we couldn't share the gospel the way we do. I, I love to get up and be able to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we're able to do that because God gave us the gift of, of speech, and so words are extremely powerful. Words are like nitroglycerin. They can heal hearts or they can blow up bridges. We all know words are very powerful. And, and we've, we've, we've all been blessed by someone encouraging us with an encouraging word, maybe when we were down or discouraged. And we've also seen people do a lot of damage with the tongue. And we raise your hand if you've ever said something you wish you hadn't. If you didn't raise your hand, we're going to pray for you tonight. <laughs> because we've all done that but words are extremely powerful and during that teaching we went for it's been two months ago we've been talking about words i'm probably sick of hearing about it but remember when god sent the 12 spies into the promised land y'all remember that and he said i want you to go in and i want you to spy out the land but this is the key that i have already given you he had already promised them that land so God promised it to them. Did you know when God promises us things, he backs up what he says? And they go into the land. He sends 12 spies, and 10 of them come back, and in a nutshell, paraphrasing, basically said, man, it is a land that flows with milk and honey. The grapes are so big, remember that, that two men had to put a stick between each shoulder and carry the grapes out. How many of us could enjoy that? Talking about a produce manager at a store, you'd be like, look at the grapes we got. It was like basketball. But it was a land flowing with milk and honey. And they carried grapes back. And they said, and, and so Moses gets with them and says, all right, tell us about it. And basically what you said was true. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. 
the ten spies. And everybody say ten. But how many went? Twelve. So we got two different guys. So the ten said yes, exactly what you said. But. Everybody say but. Do you know many times we get our butt in the way? And it's with one T. I'm not talking about the one with two T's. I'm talking about our butt. We say, yeah, God is good, but. We've all been guilty of that. Yeah, I know God said he would provide, but. Or, yeah, I know God said this or that, but. And so we put that little but in there so we can just keep complaining. Oh, ambulance. Last Wednesday night, a young lady sang a song called Don't... What was the name of it? Wambulance. And basically the theme was don't ride the wambulance. Whining and complaining. Can I get a good amen? And so we throw that little butt in there so we can complain. Because complaining is kind of fun to the flesh. Woe is me. We've all done it. So they said, you know, it's, it's exactly the way you described it. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, but, and the old but with one T gets in the way. We put that in there so we can kind of complain a little bit and, and murmur. And did you know the children of Israel spent 40 years on an 11-day journey going in circles, murmuring and complaining? And how many of you would agree with me that murmuring and complaining sometimes is kind of comes natural a little bit? We have to be careful. We have to train ourselves because it's so easy <clears throat> to begin to murmur and complain. Although, in reality, when we murmur and complain, we kind of tie God's hand, so to speak. We're not capable of that, but our words are powerful. When we say, yeah, I know God can, but all these different excuses and stuff. And so sometimes you just have to rear back in your spiritual recliner and say, you know what, I'm going to do everything I can in my natural do my part for God to give me something, give him something to work with and, and through me. But I'm going to pop my recliner back and I'm just going to have to trust him. You ever notice that? Sometimes we just got to trust him. It don't matter. How many of you in here have ever owned a business before? All right. How many of you was always perfect the whole time you owned a business? How many of you say, whoo, there were some days I thought I was going broke that night. So I was going to have to crack open that last can of sardines. Amen. <laughs> and then there's other times that, boy, things, business is booming. Amen. And you have to learn to ride through those things and, and, and trust him. And, you know, there is times that God may lead us a different direction. But my point is those ten spies said, yeah, it is like you said it is, but the people are large there. They're too strong for us. We can't take them. We can't, uh, you know, take over that land there's no way and, and then they finally said we were like grasshoppers in their sight so they said yes god's promises is true it is what he said it was but there's no way basically they grumbled and complained and made excuses on why they couldn't take the land but everybody say two guys joshua and caleb man what an awesome story i encourage you to read it and study it out joshua and caleb basically said in a nutshell Hey, guys, it actually says they quieted the crowd. Did you know bad news travels fast? Grumbling travels fast. So be careful who you hang with. Be around people that are going to build you up. And even if it's a good person, a good friend of yours that might be taking a ride down negative Nancy Lane. Amen. Amen. We, how many of us have took a few circles around negative Nancy Lane ourselves? We all, we've all took a spin. But as fast as you can, I encourage you to get off. Exit off that freeway. It's a fast freeway to nowhere. And so they did say, you know, hey, the, the land is flowing. And, and, and so Joshua and Caleb, they quieted the crowd. And they tried to stop them. Because bad news travels fast. You can go to a coffee shop in town and say some crazy. You can make something up, and if, as long as it's bad and not good, it'll get repeated. Let me tell you all a story. I got a buddy named Nelson Reedy. He's 74 years old. His wife is in the nursing home. She's got crippling arthritis in, in Nacogdoches. And uh, Monday when I, <clears throat> I worked a few hours that morning and uh, had to do some stuff with uh, Rachel on the phone a little bit here at the church, but... 
told Allison, I said, hey, I'm heading on to Nacogdoches, and I want to go to the nursing home and see Miss Nancy with my friend Nelson Reedy. He's a good friend of mine, 74 years old. He came here several years ago when we had family day. <coughs> and uh, so I went up there, and so we went to see Miss Nancy. We prayed with her, and me and Nelson went and got us something to eat. Now, she's been in a nursing home now for six, seven months, and he's having to eat sardines out of a can. I took that brother to Ken Folks. Anybody ever been to Ken Folks in Nacogdoches, a restaurant? I took him to Ken Folks, and, and so we ordered some, some, some fish. And I said, I want some grilled fish. And my buddy is one of my heroes because he can't read or write. Y'all remember he talking about Nelson? He can't read or write, and I take that. I forget that because I, uh, he can't read or write, but he's one of the sharpest texts I know. You can tell him, man, I made... Uh, I made $800 this week, and I spent $442 on groceries, and he'll tell you what you had left. No pen, no paper. Can I get a good amen? He can run them numbers. <laughs> He's one of my heroes. He has survived and been a successful paint and body man and could never read or write. But God gave him a gift. Don't let anything hold you back. Don't turn our little limps in life into excuses amen because we all got a limp we got something going on we got a scar we got something amen i got a scar in my belly button and it hurts sometimes when i bend over i remember last year i had a hernia surgery that sucker when i bend over like this uh my belt buckle hits it and i can tell it's there but there's a story behind that scar you know it's just part of life something happened i got cut on i got healed up thank god i healed up amen but we all have some things going on. And so Nelson's one of my heroes because he has made a living all his life. He's a paint and body guy. And so we go to see his wife. And, man, she's in there. She, she can't remember a lot of things. But he acts like it. We, we pick at each other like we don't like one another. And, and so we get up there, you know, and, and he said, Now, Nancy, you don't know that old sorry feller, do you? She said, I sure do. She said, that's our pastor. <laughs> she was messing with him, you know. Well, she don't remember a lot, but she knew that's my pastor. And, uh, and Nelson said, oh, it ain't our pastor. She said, her little fingers are crooked. She said, it sure is. <laughs> of course, he's just messing with her. And so after we left, we, me and Nelson, we, we, we went, I took him to eat and Back to that grilled fish. The reason I got to where he couldn't read or write, I just said, hey, I want something to eat. And I forgot he can't, he can't see that stuff. So he asked me what's on the special. And I told him. And then I said, I want some grilled fish. So we got some grilled fish. And man, old Nelson, you could tell he's been batching for about six months. That hot fish and some mashed potatoes and some, 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 some beans, man, he, it was gone. It looked like a vacuum cleaner ran over. I said, man, brother needed a home-cooked meal. And so... I left, and we went home, and we called him that evening. I said, and I knew he was kind of down about his wife being a nurse at home. I said, we just wanted to check on you. And he said, you know, he said, I got to ask a question to y'all. I got to ask a question. So I thought, I wonder what that is. He said, is Allison in the truck, will you? Yeah, she's in here. Is Bailey in the truck? I said, yeah, she's in here too. And so my old buddy said, I tell you what. Allison, you know, on July the 1st, me and Nancy will be, have been married 57 years. And she don't know it. Now, I'm going to tell her about this, and, and I want to make sure y'all can do it. Could you fix her hair, Allison? She said, you better believe I can fix her hair. And then he asked Bailey, could she help her with her, put a little blanket up there on the bed with her where, you know, where she looks nice? And he said, yeah. And we said, yeah. And he said, well, we're going to renew our wedding vows on July the 1st. <laughs> and so, man, what a blessing that is that, that, you know, my buddy Nelson. So I'm looking forward to July the 1st. Amen. We're going we, we, to ease up in that little nurse home, get in that room, and they're going to renew their vows. And, man, but that's precious. Amen. And, you know, my buddy, he struggles. Man, he's a good friend. But he's struggling right now with depression, I think, because he's at home by himself. He misses his wife. He thinks about 
Man, so I told him, I said, man, I'm call you four times a day, boy. And I do. I check on him every, every, every few hours. But he's doing, doing better. And it just blessed me that he wanted to do those wedding vows. He's going to get the, 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 la- the, the girls of my house, the ladies, to do her hair and fix her up. And they're going to renew their vows. And you think about my, my buddy old Nelson. Amen. So anyway, uh, y'all be seeing some pictures about that. So we will uh, we'll renew those, get the renewed vows for Nelson and Nelson and Nancy. He said, that old preacher there, he said, he ain't my pastor. And boy, you should have seen the look she gave him. She gave him that little crooked finger point. It was funny. They, they joke and pick on each other all the time. But in Numbers, Joshua and Caleb said, we are well able to take this land. And if the Lord is with us, let's say it together, if the Lord, that was the key. He said, we're able to take this land. If the Lord's with us, we'll be able to do this, and, and, and we're going to be able to take this land no problem. But Joshua and Caleb had to quiet the crowd. You ever notice how bad news travels fast? I dare you to go into a coffee shop tomorrow and say, you ain't going to believe this. There's a man and woman been married 57 years, and they're renewing their vows. Now, all you old men, go tell everybody you see. Might get repeated twice, maybe three times. Are all you men, women, kids, just think about it. It don't matter if you're in elementary school. Bad news travels fast. But I'm excited about good news. Amen. I'm excited about what God's doing in each of our lives. So I'm going to get rolling. Numbers 14, verse 24. We're going to read that verse, Numbers 14, 24. But it says, but my servant Caleb has a different what? One translation says a different spirit about him. Did you know there is a spirit and an attitude of faith that we need to catch as Christians? Man, we all have bad things happen to us, but there is an attitude that we have that I call it the attitude of faith. Yeah, it is a land that has large giants in it, but if the Lord be with us, we can take that land. It's a, it's the spirit of Joshua and Caleb that just jumps off the page to me. And, you know, we, we have to train ourselves to not deny reality that, yeah, we're dealing with this or that, but God has the last say. He gets the last say so. So here we go. I can't go far without talking. <laughs> But my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me. It's a God speaking. So I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. Now I'm going to read that same verse off the screen out of the NIV version, New International Version. Uh, let me know when that pops up, Miss Cheryl. Here it is. It says, but, but because my servant Caleb, I kind of like this too, has a what, a different spirit. This is my favorite part. And follows me what? Wholeheartedly. He follows me wholeheartedly. I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly. That is the key for every one of us. There comes a point in our life, a crossroads, that we got to sell out. And we say, you know what, I'm surrendering my life to Christ. One of these days, one Sunday, I'm going to preach on a white flag. And if I could get enough of them, I'd give one to everybody in the room. And I'd ask you, are you willing to wave your white flag? What does a white flag mean? not surrendering to an enemy or an opponent, but we as Christians surrender to Christ. And we say that we surrender to Him until He puts a little pressure on us. How many of you have seen an old horse, when you gird them up a little bit, they want to crow hop? Y'all want me to move right on, ain't you? Because you know what happens to us sometimes? It's all cool when God's just brushing on us. You know, out in the pasture with a horse. Oh, Peanut's been laid up for a while. She ain't been doing much. 
and I, we've been trying to give her, she's got some allergies, so we've been giving her some shots and stuff, but I hadn't rode her much here, it's been hot, <clears throat> and uh, it's easy for a horse to be cool when you're just rubbing them, everybody act like you're brushing a horse, isn't it fun when God brushes on you a little bit, how many of you like me, I'm like a cat, Miss Allison rubs on me, how many of you see her rubbing on me at church, I got the best wife in the world, amen, <laughs> But I'm like an old cat, boy, I'll just, oh, man, I'll get in position for her, you know. And at night, she'll rub my back. If I can't sleep, she'll start rubbing. Once you start rubbing my back or my head, I'm done. I'm slobbering, sleeping, snoring. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't hear myself when I'm asleep. But, man, I love to be rubbed on. And just like a horse, I mean, it's kind of cool to get brushed and washed or whatever, you know. But then there's some point you've got to put a saddle on that dude. And the saddle don't just stay up there. What you got to do, you got to put it on there, and you got to, everybody do this. You got to pull it on up a little bit. Get that gird in there. And I put peanut in the round pin the other day, and I told Bailey, I said, I ain't rode her in several months. Come out here and watch this. So I put, I pulled that old gird up, and I knew she was probably going to do something because I hadn't messed with it. And I pushed her with a buggy whip and sent her around that round pin and let her warm up. But as soon as she, as soon as I gird her up and stepped off and sent her off, she said, rrr, rrr. Hit her a couple of licks. Why? Because all of a sudden, everything in life was just easy. She was just walking around in belly deep grass, wandering around, wondering, I got a lot of decisions today. Which side of the pasture am I going to graze in? I got fresh water up here. I just seen them pour and, and run. And then the day came where I called on her. Put her in a round pin, girded her up, and she crow hopped a little bit. We got tickled about it, and she was fine. I warmed her up. But you know, that's just like us. We, we talk about surrender, or we say amen when we hear it, but are we really meaning, I'm going to surrender to you? Just like the testimony last night of James said, his, his business went down to nothing, and he said, okay, God, if you want me to live in, in, a, in a horse trailer, I'll do it. It isn't about... Does God want to put him in a horse trailer? Is it, are we willing to do whatever we need to do to serve God? And everybody's little surrender deal is different. That's fun getting brushed on, but sooner or later, God's going to girt you up a little bit. And we don't need to be going, rrr, rrr, <laughs> crow hopping out across the pit. We want to surrender to him. And the crowd roared with an enthusiastic amen. We're talking about waving that white flag. There's a, there, there's a worship song, Cody, that says, <coughs> raise the uh, white flag. I think about it all the time. I'm, I'm going to preach with the white flag one day. Because it is a sign of surrender. And if there's anyone we should ever surrender to, it would be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us, gave, gave himself on the cross. Number one, he came from heaven to this old crazy earth not because he had anything to benefit, but so he could actually buy you and I back. So in the NIV, it says he was wholehearted. He says he followed me wholeheartedly. So my challenge is, am I following him wholeheartedly? And that goes for you as well. But last Sunday, we talked a little bit. I wanted to finish up with Joshua and Caleb, especially Caleb there, how he followed God wholeheartedly. And how we see ourselves and that our identity is truly in Christ. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12 says, I will forgive their wickedness. How many of us had a little wickedness in our life at some point? <laughs> chapter we don't want read out loud. That's good. And wickedness is not just something. I mean, it could be a lot of things. If you study that word out, we've all had wickedness in our life. Anybody here ever done anything that you don't want read out loud? We all have. But you know what? Aren't you glad for His grace? Aren't you thankful for His mercy? And I will forgive their wickedness. And I will never again, help me out, remember their sin. Now how many of us are... Sometimes we don't want to admit it, but we can be professionals at remembering our sins. Remembering our past. And that's okay. I mean, there's, there's, it's good to know, hey, let me, 
Let me keep my balance here. Without him, where would I be? Nothing wrong with that at all. But at the same time, I'm telling you, beating yourself up for your past for the rest of your life as you live it as a Christian will only rob you of your calling and your reaching you f your full potential in Christ. <clears throat> that scripture is so good, I'm going to read it again. If y'all want to join me, you can, but you don't have to. I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. So God don't remember our sins anymore once we ask for forgiveness. Now, the Bible does say when we do sin, we, we still sin even though we know Jesus. Everybody smile at me and say, praise the Lord. All right, now let's get our religious face off and say, ooh, amen, Pastor. Because <laughs> we, we still fall short. But the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to what? Forgive us and to cleanse us of how much unrighteousness? All unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. That's your homework for tonight. So when we do fall short, which we do pretty often, I went by the, the feed store yesterday and got a, a sprayer for some fly spray. And everybody knows that I'm a preacher. I'm a horseshoeing preacher. And so I go by this feed store, and uh, I got a, a guy in there that I've probably witnessed to some through the years. And I said, I need a spray bottle to put some fly spray in. He said, boy, them flies are bad. I said, those flies will call a, cause a farrier to have to rededicate his life every now and then. Because those flies on a horse, understandably, makes them very uncomfortable. So they'll start stomping flies, and you're like, I don't care if it's a fly. I want you to be still. So fly spray is a blessing. Fly spray is a gift from God. How, how many, uh, it would be like a, if some of you carpenters had a 1,100-pound beam, but it was alive. <laughs> and when flies got on the beam, it started moving around and doing this. So fly spray is a blessing, Amen. You, you, you think you're tough. I got, I, I'm just going to keep on moving. Amen. I ain't going to tell that. Any of you ever got mad before? I was trimming a little two-year-old yesterday morning, just real early. It's actually for Rodney. And young, just a baby. And uh, he got tickled at me because she did perfect. All Did three feet. And I got on the fourth foot. And it was like she said, you know, I've been real nice. I'm fixing to start some crap. <laughs> so yeah, she started moving that foot around, and I, I eased around her. But she wasn't very big. She's about two years old, and, and I, I shouldn't have done this because, you know, anger will get the best of you. When, when you get to a point of getting real angry, and believe me, nobody in here is pointing a finger at their brother or sister today. Because you have some back at you. But when you do find yourself getting angry, it, the Bible says we're going to get angry. God gave us that emotion. He says, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath or anger. So if you are crossways with somebody, get it fixed. Be quick. Don't get mad at your spouse and stay mad 32 days. And you've been mad so long now you can't remember why you even got mad. Just go ahead and get it hashed out. It's not good. Amen? So that, 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 little, that little old filly went to yank on me, and I was just about done, and I was getting a little hot. I mean, because it does hurt. She was yanking on me, and so I just picked up her back leg, and I said, Go ahead, honey. You just take that sucker away. you got a grown man on you. And, you know, she tried to get her leg, and I held it. I shouldn't have done that, but I got mad. What if I'd hurt my back? That'd have been stupid, wouldn't it? <laughs> but how many of you ever got mad before and did things you probably, if you'd have been thinking a little clearer, might not have done? Well, that was weak. I had two hands, and they went up about six inches, and that was it. Well, you know, I didn't need to get, in, get in no bind, but... <laughs> See, as long as you're on this earth, you're going to be battling. And I tell you my little funny stories because it's just between me and a horse. Me, I talk to horses. Be still. Act like you're grown. <laughs> Act like you got some sense. 
tell y'all something funny and I'm closing. It's a joke between me, Bailey, and Allison. Act like you got some sense. You ever heard anybody say that? You ain't got to act all professional. How many of you heard somebody say that? We were at the cow auction a few months ago, and this little kid, was he was so happy. It was his first time to be in the ring, and they let the little kids in when the goats sell. The kids get tough when the goats come out this big. And so they let this little boy, he was cute as he could be. He's about seven or eight years old, had on some glasses, and he had on him a big palm leaf straw hat. He was a cowboy now. And so he's in there messing with the goats. And so they start the auction. And they start selling this goat. And for 20 minutes before the thing, he'd been, I, if I had a rail fence, I'd climb it. He looked like a little monkey. He was climbing that rail fence just looking at everybody. He'd see somebody out there he knew, you know. And it was okay, but when this thing started, he was still climbing the fence like a little monkey. And I heard somebody, his grandpa was behind me. He said, R.D., get down, boy. <laughs> but he couldn't hear it because the auctioneer was the auctioneer. And you could tell Pawpaw done had enough. He said, get down from there, boy. And then the guy that owns the sale barn, He's back here, and here's the ring. He's back here. He's setting in the prices. So the guy that owns the sale barn, that sucker comes out from behind there and opens the gate. <laughs> and you could tell he knew this kid. He grabbed him and shook him loose from that rail like a little monkey and set him down, and then I read his lips. That's the only way I know what he said. He said, act like you got some sense, boy, <laughs> and put him out of that ring. <laughs> so that's kind of our, <laughs> that's kind of our joke now. <laughs> Act like you got some sense. Amen. But we all have them moments. Can I get a good amen? Aren't you glad God loves us? We're going to finish next week. He, he, he remembers our sin. Hebrews 8, 12. No more. Man. Do you deserve that? Do I deserve it? I'd have to say probably don't deserve it. But that's why it's called mercy. He loved us in spite of us. He died for you when you was out doing your own thing. I ate lunch with a friend of Bailey's that cleaned his life up. They knew each other several years ago. <laughs> He's a big old kid now. And we sat there at lunch, and you could tell he almost had tears in his eyes. And he said, I live how far from his mama? He said, I, how many years? He said, I lived a half a mile from my mama. And I never went to see her for four years. But yet, God in his timing, that boy has went off and cleaned his life up. He's got a good job now. Got some chubby cheeks. Can I get a good amen? <laughs> we like to see chubby cheeks, amen, and celebrate recovery. He got some chubby cheeks. And now he goes see his mama all the time. See, that's God's mercy. He lets you do all your things you've done. But here we are. We've, we've acted like we got some sense. We're trying to live for the Lord. And he met us right where we was at. As if we had done no wrong. Once we cry out and say, Lord Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. It don't get no better than that. That's a good place to quit. I'm done like a done horse, D-U-N. Amen. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for that spirit of faith that Caleb had. May we, may we adopt that spirit of faith and learn to speak positive, good words over our life. And, Lord, we're just going to remind ourselves this Wednesday and next who we really are in Christ. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for wiping away our sin in jesus name may we go forth and let our light shine everybody said i owe y'all three minutes and 51 seconds that you will never ever see again amen <laughs> i did go over three minutes so i pray you don't hit the red lights on the way home <laughs>